Welcome to today's Gold Conversation, where part of what we do here is sit down with national leaders just to understand the plans that they do have for us in the agricultural sector. But more than that, we follow through with them to see how far gone they are with the plans. And right about now, we will be speaking to the CS of Ministry of Cooperatives and MSMEs Enterprise Development, Honorable Simon Chilugui, who will be talking to us about the reforms in the coffee sector. Thank you so very much for joining us today. We are so honored to have you here with us. Now just jumping straight into the conversation. We have sat with you before and you've talked about what you want to do for the farmers in the coffee sector. I hear down the line, we just want to find out how far gone are we with these reforms. Thank you very much, uh, Ngina, and thank you for this opportunity to speak to Kenyan farmers, coffee farmers. And I want to salute our Kenyan farmers, because uh, they accepted the reforms, they believed in the reforms, and today we've seen a significant achievement. One, we've had a growth in price by over between 12 and 20 percent, which means more money in the pockets of farmers in Kenya. We've also seen production grow from where we were last time. I think we were we had just recorded 45,000 metric tons. As we speak today, and given the statistics that were released by uh, AFA, we are now grossing over 50,000 metric tons, and we've just done 75%. So it means potentially we will get to over almost 60,000 metric tons at the end of this crop year. So those reforms, we have, we have operationalized direct cell settlement. At that time, it was an idea. It has revolutionized the period and the time farmers wait to be paid. It has also opened up the entire, pay, the entire value chain. All debts, all suppliers are also loading their claims and they can be interrogated. So no more hidden cost, no more mischievous expenditure and people are accountable. We have also uh, operationalized the Nairobi Coffee Exchange. We, the deputy president opened, uh, rang the bell, and uh, operationalized Nairobi Coffee Exchange. In that, we have operationalized, or we have licensed 14 coffee unions owned and operated by farmers. So the farmers now are engaging openly with the market, with the buyers, and they are, you know who is buying their coffee at what rate, in dollars, in Kenya shillings, they are able to see we have in onboarded the farmers in the decision process along the entire value chain, from production, primary processing, milling, warehousing, brokerage, marketing, and even buying. It's very promising to hear you talk about the fact that we have increased our production and also increased the payment to our farmers. However, it seems like this is not cutting across every other county because recently we've seen our coffee farmers in Kirinyaga County take to the streets protest of poor pay from their coffee, claiming 78 shillings per kilo is not enough, and they're also threatening to uproot their coffee bushes. What advice? What is the plan that you have for these coffee farmers, especially in the wake of these reforms? Reforms are disruptive and uh, many farmers across the country we just began the reforms. We are eight, eight, ten months in the reforms agenda. The issues of Kirinyaga, Mutira farmers, I've actually summoned them to my office today to make full disclosure of what they are deducting. We did our part as per the reforms. We recovered the cherry advance and any other cost that had been brought to our attention through the DSS. And those numbers were reasonable and they, they relate very well with other costs across the sector. But what happened in Mutira Farmers Cooperatives in Kirinyaga were there were hidden debts, hidden costs, hidden um, supplier credit or uh, uh, unpaid debts, which were not given or given, uh, uh, 
they were not uh, filed with the DSS. Part of the great plans that she had uh, with the reforms is, of course, the reviving of the Coffee Research Institute, whose mandate goes as far as getting more drought-resistant crops, giving us more skills and techniques when it comes to value addition, and also finding ways of enticing more young people into the space of coffee sector. The government promised to finance the revival of this institute. Maybe you can tell us how far gone are we with this great plan. Now, in the coffee bill is a reintroduction of Coffee Research Foundation, which is dealing with our research in terms of quality seedlings, in terms of crop husbandry, mm -hmm. extension services, and management of the coffee. So this organization has ran into financial challenges because the amalgamation of many agencies into one entity, AFA, has led to reduce funding to certain directorates, including Coffee Research Foundation. Now, the farmers themselves have confirmed to me they are agitating for revival of Coffee Research Foundation. Because when they go back, they remember the days when CRI was active. They used to be an ad valorem levy that used to be charged on coffee, produce coffee cells, and that money is shared between the coffee market, the coffee board of Kenya, which was handling marketing, and they had offices in US, in London, and even in Feist. These offices were funded by this ad valorem levy. Coffee Research Foundation used to offer premium support to coffee farmers, and they compared well with Sen Cafe, which is a research institute of Colombia. And they had a lot of corresponding sharing of information across the two countries. That is the time the farmer had the best service, extension service. They were, they were also responsible in production of Batian, which is a, a certain breed of coffee. So we had Rui 11, again, which was resistant to coffee, coffee leaf rust and coffee berry diseases. All this research were done almost 30 years ago. We've lost that opportunity, and it's time for us as a, as a country, and given the support of our coffee farmers, to revive Coffee Research Institute and also Coffee Board of Kenya. So if you were to give us a timeline, how long do you think it will take until the Coffee Research Foundation, Coffee Research Institute is taking action to the farmers? I wish I had control over parliament mm -hmm. because we've done our part as a ministry. What is outstanding is the proce enactment process. There is pressure also on these representatives because they are equally coming from coffee farming communities and they feel and they feel the challenge and, and the urge and the pressure from the farmers. Let us talk about the European Union deforestation regulation which states that any farmer who's growing coffee on a land that was initially a forest by 2020 will not be able to export their coffee to the European nations would like to understand the stand of the government in this and also what are we telling our farmers right now we are happy to comply with these new regulations by EU uh, however because it is it was suddenly introduced we would ask we are asking and we're pursuing an extension of time so that we can actually map out the areas that were I uh, initially forest and if there is any coffee so far I don't think we have expanded our growth, our, 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 our areas of growing coffee be, before 2020. We are still within our old traditional growing areas and uh, we've not touched the forest. But we need time to map out and identify if there are any. But so far, to my knowledge, I don't think we have touched any forest. Understanding that Europe takes about 60% of our coffee, we're also learning that they're leaning towards eco-friendly coffee. So in the wake of climate change, how are we helping our farmers so that even as they grow coffee, they're growing coffee that is friendly to the environment and not any one point will they be stopped to exporting it to the European nations. As we speak today, we're focusing on production and productivity. We're focusing on financing. We're we have focusing on institutional reforms and also marketing. Uh, all those issues relating to marketing and threats or opportunities of markets, we are all looking at that in totality. And gradually, the 
solarization of our processing plants using green energy to run our engines or run our pulping units uh, are now being are now being considered and given attention so simultaneously we are looking at this because one we save cost but again uh, put our processing through eco friendly processes now as we wind up this conversation let us talk about the debts you know the government promised to waiver some of the debts that have been taken by farmers in cooperative societies we want to find out when this will take full effect given that until now the lenders are still recovering their money from our farmers the real uh, burden of um, debts weighing down on the farmers produce because every kilo they produce was already charged up to 50 percent with previous debts legacy debts and then we had issues of rudimentary tools in pulping and processing coffee in emerging markets like uh, Nakuru, Baringo, Transoy, El I mean Elgoyo Marakwet, Wasing issue, and maybe Kakamega areas. So all these people requested for support again with eco friendly uh, pulping units. Then there was also the issue of farm input subsidy, fertilizers and, and chemicals that go towards the, this uh, industry, and then also the need for new seedlings variety. As a ministry, we developed a cabinet memo to request for government support to address all those issues, because cherry advance alone is not going to deliver the reforms that we desire and want. So we, uh, we looked at the whole uh, sector, the coffee sector in totality. At the beginning with the cherry advance, we came down to now debts. We realized that they were old legacy debts that were acquired by these societies, either as government grants or loans extended on behalf of the farmers for, borrowed from other multilateral and also commercial banks. So I was instructed by cabinet to map out and collate and call tally all the debts. So these debts include the um, second coffee improvement scheme one and the second coffee Impro improvement scheme two. Improve these were World Bank projects meant to improve the factory, primary factory processing, pulping, drying beds, and they were done almost 20 years ago. Then there was a second phase of the same, and this led to improvement of primary processing units for our coffee factories. Then came Stabex, stabilization of exports. Again, this was a World Bank loan, a European fund that was given to government of Kenya to stabilize exports, and coffee was one of them. And this was transferred to coffee farmers. Then there was also commodities fund that developed and, grew and expanded the coffee millings, which are across the country. The 14 of them were funded through the Commodities Fund, and this burden was given, shared or transferred to the farmers. Very finally, Buona CS, I cannot release you without talking to the youth. Is there space for us in the coffee sector? Is there an avenue for us to raise our voices and our voices getting heard and action being taken? When this coffee cooperative bill is going to lead to uh, fresh elections, across the societies involved in coffee and uh, in this we will be encouraging and supporting and mentoring young people to participate and and uh, be uh, participate in the leadership of societies by standing up for those elections and possibly working with them administratively to ensure that we have an affirmative action for women and young people that's one two the the fact that we are digitalizing operations, paying, DSS is a digital system, uh, processing is a digital system, is a really a, a youthful uh, reflection and consideration of their role in the coffee sector. The, the fact that they can, be, they can fund, they can lease out farms and produce coffee, and through digital means they are able even to identify and source for external markets. The fact that we have opened the space 
at the Nairobi Coffee Exchange. We used to ask for $1 million guarantee for you to participate. Now, with the tools available and the use of digital uh, platforms, you can be able to link the farmer, Kenyan farmer producer, with external buyers digitally. So again, this is a youth, uh, this is a, a, a youthful, I mean, this is an area our young people can exploit. Great. Thank you so very much for talking to us and helping us understand just where we are when it comes to the reforms in the coffee sector. We'll most definitely look for you again to see what's happening in this space, right? Thank you so very much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah.